Welcome to the Ranking Things Podcast, the production of Jason Davis VoiceOver. Please visit jasondavisvoice.com for information about voiceover services for commercials, internet and corporate videos, e-learning, phone messages, and more. I'm Jason Davis. And I'm Eric Wright. And each episode, we are going to choose a topic to rank. We'll give you our choices for our top five. We'll defend our choices. And then you join the conversation by emailing us, rankingpodcast at yahoo.com or tweeting at Jason Davis Voice. Well, we have a fun topic, Eric. Like we always do. Yes. Are you ready for this one? The top five rock album openers. Uh, again, this was so friggin' hard. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's just so much out there. And of course, I solicit some input from some friends and family. I look online sometimes. All right. So what's your number five? All right. My number five is from the Rolling Stones, the 1969 album, Let It Bleed, with that fantastic opener, Give me shelter. Okay. It fades in slowly with this just really cool kind of haunting Keith Richards guitar. And then it slowly builds. And then you got Mick coming in with the whoo. It's just really cool. And they get, you know, Keith Richards just has, I mean, his own sound and it builds up. I just love that. And anytime I hear it, I turn the radio up and sometimes I go, you know, through my CDs and actually look for it and listen to it. Yeah, I've never been a huge Stones fan. And I know yeah. a lot of people are probably like, oh, figures, what a, what a dick. He doesn't have any taste in music and stuff. <laughs> Especially when you hear, you know, when I go through my list. But that song is obviously a classic. There's this great movie called 20 Feet from Stardom. Mm-hmm. And it's all about all the great background singers that are kind of um, unsung heroes. And mm-hmm. the woman who does the hook on Gimme Shelter is featured. They talk about when they recorded that. Like she was in hair rollers. Like they called her in the middle of the night <laughs> to come down to the studio. It's a great story. When you hear her vocals isolated with nothing mm-hmm. else, it's super cool. The whole movie's great, but that part in particular is very, very interesting. It's very cool. Okay. All right. What's your five? Number five for me, the title track of Meatloaf's Bat Out of Hell. Out of Hell. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I'm going to give my wife, Sue, a little bit of credit for this one because she had suggested it. And when when she suggested it, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's got to be in the top five. Listen, no rock album sounds like Meatloaf's Bat Out of Hell. Jim Steinman's writing and his voice mm-hmm. are, are just perfect together. The song is just under 10 minutes. It literally is epic. <laughs> and, you know, that album, I mean, you talk about teen angst. Oh, my God. And it just captures, you know, you're 16, 17 years old or whatever. And, you know, first girlfriend and breakup and yep. little spats back and forth. And I remember, like, Meatloaf just seeing, uh, like, going to a record store and seeing a a, a poster of him and he's all sweaty and yep. nasty and his hair's all <laughs> stringing down but he's wearing like the fluffy shirt from seinfeld yeah like a tuxedo shirt with the ruffles the, the ruffles and yeah because yeah. he's very operatic you know yeah and uh so that's a that's a great choice i like that pretty much every record company passed on this album everybody that they played it for where they were like what the hell is this you know because it was like nothing else out there you know, oh, it definitely is a different thing. And yeah. yeah, anybody that was willing to take a chance on that was either crazy or they just saw or heard something that they thought was going to become big because, yeah, it's it's different. The whole album plays very theatrical. This song in particular, mm-hmm. it's a real roller coaster ride and, and it definitely mm-hmm. sets the tone for the whole album. It's one of the top albums of all time, having sold more than 43 million copies worldwide. All, all right, right. Number four. My number four is uh, from the Violent Femmes from their self-titled debut album, 1983, Blister in the Sun. That brings me back to you know college and partying with a bunch of other kids my age. The first time I heard somebody put that album on, it starts off with just this like acoustic guitar doing dun 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 Snare drum, snare drum, snare drum, snare drum. And I mean, I'm sure musicians have a term for the way the guitar sounds, but I mean, it's so basic and raw, like somebody was doing it in their bathroom because you kind of hear the strings reverberating and you kind of you hear the fingers sliding down the strings because I know I think it was Keith Richards. His big thing was playing a guitar for a while before he would use it to record because of that sound. He didn't like that sound 
sliding your fingers on the string. So he played it so the skin from his fingers would get in the strings. Oh, wow. So you, so you didn't hear that sliding sound. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so I thought that's pretty interesting. So I just really love that album. And the whole album, you talk about the cycle of a relationship and you know, you're hanging around with a bunch of friends and just jumping around and being silly and you know, the lyrics in that that whole album were just uh, very odd. Um, <laughs> so it's very, very fun. And it's a song about masturbation too, right? <laughs> Is it? I think it is. <laughs> blister in the sun. Yeah. Let me go on. See, now I'm going to have to go through like a blister in the sun. Let me go on. Nah, I don't Isn't know. Isn't it something like big hands? Something? Big hands, I know you're the one. Uh-huh. Body beats, I stay my shit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> ah, revelation wow. on the Ranking Things podcast. Gosh, I am so naive. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Fun fact about this. In uh-huh. uh, 2005, Blister in the Sun became the first English language song allowed on the all-Irish language radio station RTE. Oh, okay. So you're four. Number four for me, Tom Sawyer from Moving Pictures by Rush. Oh, 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 oh. Yes. Excellent choice. So uh, Moving Pictures has always been my favorite Rush album. When it came out, it really took their career to a whole new level. I mean, they you know they had success, obviously, but mm-hmm. they went from being sort of a, a band with a real cult following to being Rush. You know, I mean, they, mm-hmm. they really became very big with that album. And Tom Sawyer, definitely the perfect opener for the album. I love that whole album. I think it's good from start to finish. Tom Sawyer, you got the trademark synth, a mm-hmm. huge part of the Rush sound. I dare you to not play air drums during the drum solo. Of course. You have to play the drums. Yeah. Even if, and, and it has to be in the air because of course. if you try to hit anything, yeah, no, you're, you're just going to foul it all up miserably. It just solidified them as the great band that they are. Yeah, yeah. I've seen them a couple times. I really like Rush. That's a great choice. Thanks, man. What do you got for number three? Number three, I have from 1991, U2's Achtung Baby. Mm-hmm. The opening song was Zoo Station. I um, was always a big U2 fan. Which surprises me that they're number three for you. Well, makes you curious as to what I have above them, right? Yep, it does. But do remember, I am really a classic rocker at heart. I was a huge U2 fan all the way up until Joshua Tree. And then when they released Rattle and Hum, I was like, "Uh, I'm not really sure where they're going with this. So I wasn't all that thrilled with Rattle and Hum. And then a few years later, this new album comes out and on the radio they're playing the fly and i was like wow that sounds really cool i like this this is a little different for them so when i went to get the cd the cover of the cd is very different they're wearing makeup it definitely had a much more alternative feel and when i put it on in my car and it opened up with zoo station you know you hear the this kind of echoey guitar different than what Edge had been doing before, and then another this kind of weird thunder sound, <laughs> and then you got these other mechanical sounds coming in, and then you got the drums coming in, and you're like, <laughs> and I'm in my car <laughs> dancing. This is not you too. This is friggin' great. This is all out. And then Bono starts singing, and it's synthesized, distorted a little bit, and I'm just like, holy crap. And that whole album is just fantastic, and it's my favorite U2 album. Wow. I think one of the best albums ever made, completely redefining U2. I mean, we talk about groups that redefine themselves and rebirth. I mean, this was just huge, and other bands oftentimes when they released an album, you know, they would say, oh, yes, this is a, a departure for us. It's kind of like our Octoon baby. So <laughs> it was uh, so Bono's lyrics are always good, but these lyrics were different. I just friggin love that. And it's exciting. And I'd never turn it off. Yeah. You two has always uh, had their own sound. They seem to always try to reinvent themselves a little bit without losing their core sound. And that's why I think they've been around as long as they have, because they have a very unique thing. So There you go. So you're number three. Number three for me, from Van Halen's Fair Warning, Mean Street. Oh, yeah. Now, you know, it would be 
easier to say, you know, Running With The Devil from the first Van Halen album. Yes. That's one of my runners up. But the reason I didn't choose that is because uh, I think that album's going to get a lot of love in later podcasts. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. but that's a classic, too. But Mean Street mm-hmm. for me, first off, you fade in to Eddie Van Halen's opening guitar solo. Mm-hmm. Right. And then you get into that classic riff. <laughs> with the great Sorry, that, that great uh, that buzzsaw yeah. guitar tone. I mean, Eddie Van Halen's guitar sound has just always been what everybody strives for in rock and roll, yeah. you know? I mean, in, especially mm-hmm. in hard rock. Yeah. And yeah. then the drums and the bass kick in with that killer groove. The lyrics, yeah. tough life on the street, very colorful. Yeah. They really paint the picture of a, of a, a sort of a skid row environment. Mm-hmm. And this is a perfect example of a Van Halen song that just fits perfectly for David Lee Roth's voice. My favorite line in the song, you know this ain't no through street, end is dead ahead, the poor mm. folks play for keeps, down here, they're the living dead. Great song. It's, just a killer, yeah. killer song. Cool. Very good choice. Number two. Well, now my uh, classic rock overtones are going to be coming in. So for number two, off the Beatles, 1969, Abbey Road, Come Together. And, you know, that's a song that starts off with shoot me doom, doom. And you got the bass, then you got a little cymbals. Shoot, doom, doom. And that just is such a weird, unique kind of tingling up the back sound. <laughs> First time I heard that, a friend of mine, I guess I was like maybe 10 or 11. So this friend of mine who was learning guitar. So he was getting all these albums and stuff. We knew the happy poppy Beatles. And then he put this on. And when that first shivering came out, it just like gave me goosebumps. I'm like, oh my God, what is this? The Beatles are are a band that are very fun to listen to with headphones too. You really hear a lot of cool elements in the production and the way it's Mm -hmm. recorded. Here Comes the Sun, by the way, is a a good place to start. Listen to that with headphones and you're going to hear things that maybe you didn't even realize were there. What's your two? Number two for me, from the Kiss album Destroyer, Detroit Rock City. It's a Kiss song that's that's been in their set list every night since it came out. Right, Mm mm-hmm. This particular version of the song is actually one of my first memories of the band. When I first was introduced to Kiss, it was this song and Kiss Alive 2. But when this album came out, they had just broken big with Kiss Alive, which was bombastic. And this Mm. album comes out, and the first minute and a half or so of the song is like this theater of the mind thing, where you hear like a guy doing dishes, and you hear like a newscast in the background, and then he gets in the car, he... Hits the gas pedal a couple times. He starts the car. You hear rock and roll all night playing on the radio. And you're like, oh, that's kind of cool. They incorporated their, uh, you know, their big hit from the last record into the the new album. Blah blah blah. And then the classic riff kicks in. And you know what? I don't care if you like Kiss or not. You can't sit there and say this is not a great rock and roll song. It's one of the few Kiss songs that classic rock radio plays. Yeah, and it gets your blood going. I mean, there's no doubt. Driving drums. Yep. The harmony guitar solo, which is very cool, which was actually written by the producer, Bob Ezrin. Okay. And by the way, it's one of the few Kiss songs that they can do as an opener or as an Mm -hmm. encore because it's so popular with the band's fans and one of the best openers for a Kiss concert ever. It's just perfectly made for that. It gets the blood going. It is rock and roll. Absolutely. So what's number one for you? All right. Number one for me. See if you can guess it. <laughs> the immigrant song, Led Zeppelin 3. Led Zeppelin 3 from 1970. Nice. Um, frankly, I could have chosen a few. Could have gone with Black Dog. I mean, when that just opens up, first time I heard that album, hey, hey, mama said the way you move, just grabs yeah. you by the nuts right at the beginning. Same thing with the immigrant song, you know, dun, 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 the ice and snow from the midnight sun where the hot springs flow that's so yeah. freaking cool oh, and it's no doubt robert plant he's a big uh, lord of the rings fan and i just love so many of his lyrics bring in that whole mystical other world feeling and yeah so i mean you just talk about rock and roll getting your blood boiling and making you just want to get out there and bang some drums or smash guitars or whatever. It's To me, there's nothing better than uh, the Immigrant Song opener. Kiss was number two for me. Are you sitting there going, wait a minute, Kiss was number two? Who could possibly be number one for him? Well, if it's not Van Halen. It's not. Number one for me is a song 
that I feel this list was made for because every time I hear this song, my thought is this is got to be the greatest <laughs> album opener of all time. Okay. It's from the 1982 Judas Priest album, Screaming for Vengeance. Mm-hmm. The song is called The Hellion Electric Eye. It's actually two songs. There's a 40 second okay. instrumental called The Hellion that mm-hmm. segues immediately into a song called Electric Eye. They've okay. opened shows with this song. If you've ever had somebody that's not really initiated into what heavy metal music is all about, right? this is a great place to start. You play this, this combination of The Hellion Electric Eye, and mm-hmm. they're going to go, okay, I get it. Right. So the instrumental track, The Hellion, it's just face melting guitars. In fact, they used it. <laughs> face melting. They used The Hellion for a uh, Honda Odyssey commercial recently, a few years ago. Really? Yeah. Glenn Tipton and K.K. Downing are the guitar players from Judas Priest. Just a great guitar duo, guitar harmonies, all kinds of great lead work. Just killer, heavy metal, just perfect. You'll need to play it for me. Yeah. But I totally trust because knowing your taste in music, when you're saying something is (laughs) face-melting, I am totally there with you. I've got to hear this. You could look it up on YouTube for sure. It's definitely on there. Mm-hmm. But but I mean, it's so cool that it made minivans look cool. So <laughs> well. the instrumental thing, the Hellion, it segues right into, it kicks into Electric Eye, total mm-hmm. balls to the wall riff, killer powerful drums. And then of course, the voice of Rob Halford, they call him the metal God because he's everything a heavy metal singer should be. But like I said, I feel like this list was made for this song to be number one because every time I hear the song, I'm just like, what a great way to open an album. Again, even if you're not a fan of Judas Priest or this kind of music, if you hear this, mm-hmm. you'll understand why I chose it for number one. And if you don't understand, then uh, we just obviously tough. have very different viewpoints when it comes to music. Hey, tough toenails. It's our podcast. So what did you have for honorable mentions? I have a, a oh, very extensive fine. list. So yeah. we'll go through both lists. And if you, you know, if you want to say a few words about each, that's cool. No, definitely. And, you know, it'd be very easy to go through through all the typical ones. Bruce, Born to Run, 1975, opening with Thunder Road. The Jay Giles Band, 1981, Freeze Frame, uh-huh. with the... Uh-huh. And it goes into uh, some horns and everything. Yep. I mean, that's... I didn't see that on anybody's list. I don't understand how that can't be. You know I'm a Ramones fan, so going to 76 with their opener, Blitzkrieg Bop. Okay. Some New York Dolls. But there's one particular I want to talk about, the Dickies. 1988, uh, they had an EP called Killer Clowns from Outer Space. <laughs> that was that was really, the movie based on, on that, or was that based on the movie? They did it for the movie. They okay. did that song for the movie, but that EP has other stuff, like Eep, Op, Orc, Ah, uh-uh, Ah, which you might remember from the, from Jetsons. the Flintstones. No, the Jetsons. It was the Jetsons? Yeah, it was the Jetsons. Jet Screamer on the, on the Jetsons. Jet Screamer, okay. Yeah. So... That opening song, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, it is so freaky. It just starts off with your typical carnival music, and then you hear these like demented clowns start laughing. <laughs> is there any other kind of clown? Oh, these are even <laughs> scarier. These make Stephen King clowns look like Bozo. Like, yeah, Bozo. <laughs> And as they're laughing, the laughing speeds up. So it's like, huh, 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 <laughs> and then it goes into this guitar. <laughs> oh God, that's weird. And I'll, and you're just like, oh my God, what the heck is this? That might have been just a little too off the wall for me to put in my top five. Nirvana with Smells Like Teen Spirit. Okay, I really I like the Red Hot Chili Peppers, 1989, the Californication. Okay, I like Red Hots in general because they're like this weird fusion of like a funky rap rock alternative i just i really really like them yeah and the way around the world opens up with flea in the bass just that's you know bow 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 bass and then the bass he goes bow, blah, 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 and then the guitar comes in <laughs> and then you got the screaming yeah all around the world we can make time rump it and stop it because i'm in my prime <laughs> Oh my God, what just happened in that 10, 15 seconds? It's it's killer. It's absolutely killer. The Red Hot Chili Peppers are definitely another band that are their own thing. No oh, question. Yeah. One thing was on my top five that fell down was Who's Next, 1971 with Baba O'Reilly. Yeah, I mean, that's a classic you know, song. That's super classic. But, you know, once you start heading down that road, then you get into, like, you know, Boston and um, mm-hmm. so many of those, uh, you know, 70s. And you move into the 80s. You got friggin' ZZ Top, R.E.M., Murmur from 1983. 
Radio Free Europe. And I even like Black Sabbath, not a Black Sabbath fan at all. But when you listen to the very first album, the mm -hmm. opener with that freaky Mo bass line, you're like, Mo oh. Mo yeah, it's just like, holy crap, that is the beginning of heavy metal. Yeah. I mean, without or question, they're, they're certainly one of the forefathers. Absolutely. I can keep going on with, you know, Food Fighters, Stone Temple Pilots, White mm -hmm. Stripes. It goes on and on, so I'm going to have to stop there. All right. Well, I had Smells Like Teen Spirit from uh, Nevermind by Nirvana as well. From the first Led Zeppelin album, Good Times, Bad Times. Sure. I thought of Whole Lot of Love, too. Immigrant Song was one I mm -hmm. thought of. The thing I like about Good Times, Bad Times, unlike a lot of Led Zeppelin stuff, it's right. not six or seven minutes long. It's got a great groove. The drumming on that song is ridiculously good. Oh, yes. So yep. cool. Yeah, it's just a great track. Also, I, I mentioned Running with the Devil from Van Halen's debut. Sure. Enter Sandman from Metallica's Black oh, Album. yeah. Welcome to the Jungle from Appetite for Destruction oh, by Guns N' Roses. Yes. Yeah, that guitar, that that's a different sounding guitar when you first heard that. And the way Axl Rose comes in with the, that scream and stuff, very cool. <laughs> yeah. There's a story that uh, Axl Rose was saying they were playing in a club. They ended the set with Welcome to the Jungle. Clint Eastwood came up to them and you know just kind of looked at them and said that's a good song <laughs> and axel's just like oh my god that's so cool freaking that, that is you cool. Know, clint eastwood just said we're cool <laughs> that's pretty amazing yeah. actually from u2's war sunday bloody sunday oh sure the classic yeah. snare sound it's killer also uh another kiss album love gun starts with i stole your love that's on my uh, honorable mentions okay a great riff uh, mm -hmm. From Ozzy Osbourne's Diary of a Madman album, Over the Mountain. And I also, <laughs> oh, I, I also, yeah. I also want to say I Don't Know from the Blizzard of Oz album from Ozzy as well. Oh, okay. Both great Randy Rhodes riffs. Mm -hmm. The title track, The Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap by ACDC. Right, okay. From Alice in Chains' Dirt, Them Bones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stand Up and Shout from Dio's Holy Diver. Two Def Leppard albums, High and Dry, Let It Go. And uh, yes. from Pyromania, Rock Rock Till You Drop. Mm -hmm. The title track to Green Day's American Idiot. I had that on here, definitely, because okay. American Idiot really brought them back. Oh, absolutely. Not to mention the Weird Al version, Canadian Idiot, which I think <laughs> is genius. I love which that. Which is even better. Yeah, I, I agree. It is, actually. <laughs> Cult of Personality from Vivid by Living oh, Color. Oh, yeah. Good call. Thanks, man. Addicted to That Rush from Mr. Big's self-titled debut. Just a tour de force of musicianship on that song. Billy Sheehan on bass especially just yeah. kills it. From Night Ranger's Midnight Madness album, You Can Still Rock in America. And I, I'm putting uh, that on there because I just saw them live recently and they just blew me away. Incredible musicians. One that I have to mention because it was the first number one heavy metal mm -hmm. hard rock album on the Billboard charts. And one of my uh, early memories of a song that really, and, a, and an album that really grabbed my attention when I think I was in eighth grade or so, Quiet yeah. Riot's Metal Health album, uh, the title track, <laughs> Metal Health, Bang Your Head. <laughs> oh, and I laugh, but in all honesty, when I was a freshman in college, a couple guys I was hanging out with really liked that kind of stuff. And we actually did that song for an air band contest. Yeah, I'm not a huge Quiet Riot fan. I like, you know, a handful of their songs or whatever. I mean, they were a big band for me when they first, you know, broke big when I was younger and stuff. I know a lot of people are listening to this podcast and they're probably going, God, does this guy listen to anything but hard rock? <laughs> the truth of the matter is, when I was younger, you know, mm -hmm. particularly teenage and maybe early 20s, this was the main kind of music that I really was into. Right. And as a result, that's the stuff that I, I kind of go back to more often than not. That being said, there is a lot of other kind of stuff that I like. The stuff that really impacted me when music was a big part of shaping me or whatever right, was this right. stuff. It's what I know <laughs> the best. Admittedly, I'm not really into a lot of newer stuff. I, mean, I tend to gravitate toward the stuff that I just I know well and grew up with and that, that meant something to me. Maybe because I like being nostalgic because the world is a really mm -hmm. fucked up place nowadays. When I hear these songs, it just brings me mm -hmm. back to a time that was a lot simpler. And yeah, I appreciate yeah. That. So um, I feel like I'm done. I mean, uh, I'm good too. <laughs> the I mean, the list could keep going, and of I course. know people like, "Oh, how come you don't have CCR in there? How come you don't have?" Right, like, Ugh. because it'll go on forever. Yeah, I mean, there's a million great bands with great albums that have great openers, but we've covered a, a good broad sort of cross section yeah. of music. Okay, man. All right. Well, Eric, as always, uh, fun having a conversation about a topic, and it's always uh, interesting to see how much we don't agree on stuff. <laughs> and it's always fun to see how far off we can get sometimes. Yeah. 
But always a pleasure uh, doing these podcasts with you. It's always a lot of fun. And uh, thanks to you guys for listening. We appreciate it. Remember, the Ranking Things podcast is a production of Jason Davis VoiceOver. Please visit jasondavisvoice.com if you need a voice for a commercial, internet and corporate video, e-learning, phone message, and more. We also want you to get involved in the conversation. If you got a criticism, if you have your own opinion you want a voice, send us your additions to the list to rankingpodcast at yahoo.com. I'm Jason Davis. And I'm Eric Wright. A big thanks for listening to the Ranking Things podcast. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.